live from Boston, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE, covering Red Hat Summit 2019. Brought to you by Red Hat. Welcome back here on theCUBE, joined by Stu Miniman. I'm John Walls as we wrap up our coverage here of the uh, Red Hat Summit here in 2019. We've been here in Boston all week, three days, Stu, of really fascinating programming on one hand, the keynotes uh, showing quite a diverse ecosystem that uh, Red Hat has certainly built. Uh, and we've seen that array of guests reflected as well here on theCUBE, and you leave with a, a pretty distinct impression about the vast uh, reach, you might say, of Red Hat, and how they diversified their offerings and their services. Yeah, so John, uh, as, as we've talked about, this is the sixth year we've had theCUBE here. It's my fifth year doing it, and like, I'll, I'll be honest, I've worked with Red Hat for 19 years, but the first year I came, it was like, all right, you know, I, I know lots of Linux people, I've worked with Linux people, but you know, I, I'm, I'm not in there in the terminal and you know, doing all this stuff, so it took me a little while to get used to. Today, I know not only a lot more people in Red Hat in the ecosystem, but uh, where the ecosystem has matured and where the portfolio has grown, there's been some acquisitions on the Red Hat side. Uh, there's a certain pending acquisition that uh, you know, was kind of a big deal uh, that we talked about this week, uh, but you know, Red Hat's position in this IT marketplace, especially in the hybrid and multi-cloud world, uh, has been fun to watch and really enjoyed digging in it with, with you this week. Yeah. And John Walls, I'll, I'll turn the, the, the camera to you because I don't it was like this. your first time <laughs> uh, on the program. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, it was, Stu, this is the, you I know, like you're, asking you're, you're the, the host. questions. Um, but, um, you know, we, we have to do this, uh, you know, three days of Walls to Miniman coverage, so right, let's right. get the Walls right. perspective right. uh, on uh, your take. You've been to many shows. Yeah, no, I think, I think that what's interesting about what I've seen here at Red Hat is this, this willingness to adapt to the marketplace. Uh, at least that's the impression I got, uh, is that you know, there are a lot of uh, command and control models about this is the way it's going to be, and this is what we're going to give you, and you're going to have to take it and like it. And, and Red Hat's just on the other end of that spectrum, right? Uh, it's very much a company that's built on an open source philosophy, and it's been more of what is the marketplace wanted, uh, what have you needed, and now how can we work with you to build it and make it functional? And now we're going to just offer it to a lot of people, and we're making a lot of money doing that. And so I think to me that, that's at least what I got, talking to Jim Whitehurst you know, about his philosophy and where he's uh, taken this company and uh, has made it obviously a very attractive yep. uh, entity. IBM certainly thinks so to the tune of 34 billion. Yeah, but I, you see that. As, you know, some companies say, oh, well, you know, it's the leadership from the top. Well, Jim's philosophy though, it is the open organization. Highly yep. recommend the book. It was a great read. We've talked to him about the program. Mm -hmm. But very much it's, you know, what, 12, 13,000 people at the company. They are very much opinionated, they go in there, they have discussions. It's not like, well, okay, one person passed this down, it's mm -hmm. we're going to debate and argue and fight, doesn't mean we come to a full consensus, but open source at the core, you know, is what they do, and therefore the community drives a lot of it. They, you know, they contribute it all back upstream, but, you know, we know what Red Hat's doing. Uh, you know, it's, it's fascinating to talk to Jim about, yeah, you know, you know, on the days where I'm thinking half glass empty, it's, you know, wow, we're, we're not yet quite $4 billion of the company, and look what an impact they had. They did a study with IDC, it said $10 trillion of the economy that, that they touch through RHEL, um, but on the half empty, uh, on the half full uh, days, he's, you know, they're having a huge impact outside. Mm -hmm. He said $34 billion that IBM paying is actually a bargain. It's a great deal for where they're going, <laughs> um, but uh, you know, big announcements. Uh, Rel eight, uh, which had been almost five years in the works, mm. uh, there um, some good advancements there. Uh, but the highlight for me this week really was OpenShift, and we've been watching OpenShift since the early days, mm. uh, really pre Kubernetes. Um, it had a good vision and you know, gained adoption in the marketplace and was the open source choice uh, for what we called PaaS back then. Mm -hmm. But when Kubernetes came around, uh, it really helped solidify where uh, you know, OpenShift was going. It, it is the delivery mechanism for containerization and that container cluster management. And uh, Red Hat has a leadership position in that space 
Uh, I think almost every customer that we talked to this week, John, OpenShift was the underpinning. You know, you would Absolutely. expect that yep. Rel's underneath there, but yep. OpenShift as the lever for digital transformation, and that was something I really enjoyed talking to. You know, uh, the DBS Bank from Singapore and Delta and UPS. It was we talked about their actual transformation journeys, both the technology and the organizational standpoint. And OpenShift really was the lever to give them uh, that that push. You know, another thing, and and because uh, again, you, I know you you've been uh, looking at this and watching this for many many years, and certainly the evolution of open source. But when I, we talked to Chris Wright earlier, and he was talking about the pace of change, and how you know, it really is incremental, and, and, and yet if you're on the outside looking in, you think, gosh, technology is just changing so fast. It's so crazy, it's so disruptive. But to hear it from Chris, you know, not so. You don't go A to Z, you go A to B to C to D to D point, you know, one. Uh, it takes time, and there's a patience almost, and a cadence that has this slower evolution that I'm a little surprised at. That I, I just I sense a uh, or got a sense of a you know a much more rapid change of pace, and that's not how the people on the inside see it. Yeah, a couple of comments back on that. Number one is we know how much rapid change there is going because if you t looked at you know, the Linux kernel or what's happening in Kubernetes and the open source, there's so much change going on there. Uh, there's the data point thrown out there that you know, I, I, was it 75% or 95% of all the data in the world was created in the last two years. Yeah. Yet, only 2% of that is really usable and searchable and things like that, so that's a lot of change. And the code base of Linux, in the last two years, a third of the code is completely overhauled. This technology that's been around uh, for decades. Um, but if you look at it, if you think about a company, one of the challenges that we had is, if they're making those incremental change and slowly looking at them, a lot of people from the outside would be like, Oh, Red Hat. Yeah, that's that you know little Linux company you know uh, that you know I'm, I'm familiar with, and it runs on lots of places there. When we came in six years ago, there was a big push for, by Red Hat to say we're much more than Linux. They have their three pillars uh, that we spent a lot of time through, from the infrastructure layer to the cloud native to the automation and management. Lots of shows I go to, Ansible's all over the place. We talked about, you know, OpenShift 4 is something that seems to be resonating. Uh, you know, Red Hat takes a leadership position, uh, not just in the communities and the, and, uh, the, the foundations, uh, but you know, working with their customers to be a more trusted and deeper partner uh, in what they're doing with digital transformation. So um, there might have been little changes, but you know, this is not the Red Hat that people would think of mm -hmm. you know, two years or five years ago because a large percentage of Red Hat has changed. Um, and one last nugget from, sure. from Chris Wright there is you know, he spent a lot of time talking about AI. And so many companies you know, go buzzwords and you know, these environments, but you know, he had a, had a nice cogent message with the, the punchline is, you know, machine enhanced human intelligence. Um, because these are really complex systems, distributed architectures, and we know that the people just can't keep up with all of the change and the scope and the scale that they need to, uh, to handle. So software should be able to be helping me get my arms around it as well as where it can automate and even take actions as long as we're careful about how we do it. Sure. Um, I, I, there's another point at least I'm, I'm pick your brain about is the, really the power of presence. The fact that we have the Microsoft CEO on the stage, everybody thought, well now, but we heard it from guest after guest after guest this week saying, how cool was that? How impressive was that? How monumental was that? And, and you know, it's great to have that kind of, of opportunity, but the power of, of uh, Nadella's presence here was, it's unmistakable in the message that has sent to this community. Yeah, uh, you know, John, you could probably do a case study talking about culture and the, the power of culture because mm -hmm. I, I talked about Red Hat, it's not the Red Hat that you know. Well, the Satya Nadella led Microsoft is a very different Microsoft than, than bef before uh, he, he was on board. Not only uh, are they making great strides in, you know, we talk SaaS and public cloud and the like, uh, but from a partnership standpoint, you know, Microsoft of old, you know, Linux and Red Hat were the enemy, and you know, Windows was the solution, and they were going to bake everything into it. Well, mm -hmm. Microsoft 
partnering with many more companies. Partnerships and ecosystem, a key message this week. Uh, you know, we, we talked about uh, you know, Microsoft uh, with, uh, uh, with, with Red Hat, but you know, announcement today was, surprised me a little bit, but when we think about it, not too much. Uh, OpenShift supported on VMware environments. So, uh, you know, VMware, uh, you know, has, uh, you know, in that family of Dell, there's competitive solutions against OpenShift. Mm -hmm. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, so in, in, in virtualization, you know, Red Hat has, you know, Rev, uh, the Red Hat virtualization. Right, so, right, right. The, the old day of, the, the lines and the swim lanes, as, as one of our guests talked about, really are there. Customers are living in a heterogeneous, you know, multi-cloud world, uh, and the customers are going to go and say, uh, you need to work together. Like well, uh, Azure, or right? You're, 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 you're not going to be there. We so. have Azure compatibility going on here. Yeah, deep, not, not, not just some tested, but deep integration. I can go to Azure and buy OpenShift. I mean, yeah. that, the, the, to say it's in the, you know, not just in the marketplace, but uh, a, a deep integration, and uh, yeah, there was little poke, uh, if, if, if our audience caught it from Paul Cormier, uh, and said, you know, Microsoft really understands enterprise, and that's why they're working tightly with us. Uh, there's a certain other large cloud <laughs> provider that created <laughs> Kubernetes that has their own solution that maybe doesn't understand enterprise as much and aren't working as closely with Red Hat as they might. So we'll, we'll, we'll see what response there Big is uh, right, from right, them, right, right. <laughs> uh, you know, out there. But, right. um, you know, always, uh, you know, we, we always love on theCUBE to, you know, the horses on the track and where they're racing, but, you know, more and more, um, you know, all of our words, worlds are cross-pollinating, you know, the AI and AI ops uh, stuff, the, mm -hmm. the, the software ecosystems, because, um, you know, software does have this unifying factor that they, it, you know, the API economy and having all these things work together more and more. Um, if you don't, uh, you know, customers will go look for solutions that sure. do provide uh, the full end-to-end -end solutions that they're looking right, for. So we're, uh, I, I've got a couple in mind as far as guests we've had on the show, and we saw them uh, actually on the keynote stage too. Um, anybody that jumps out at you, just like, wow, that was cool. That was, uh, not that we, we, we love all of our children, right? Uh, but every once in a while there's a story or two that, that does stand out. Yeah, um, so it, it is so tough. What, what uh, you know, I, I loved is, you know, the stories. Uh, you know, John, I'm sure I'm going to ask you, we, you know, Mr. Yeah. B and what he's doing with the children right. and, and the Middle hospitals School. with, uh, yeah. uh, you know, uh, the, the Dr. Ellen and the, the, you know, the brains, those, you know, tech for good are phenomenal. Um, if, for me, uh, you know, the CIOs that we had on our first day of program, you know, Delta was great and going mm -hmm. through digital transformation, but, you know, our first guest that we had on uh, was uh, DBS Bank in Singapore, right. and, and it's David just, Gledhill. you yeah, know, yeah. he was so articulate yeah. um, and has such a good story about, I took outsourced environments, I didn't just bring it into my environment and say, okay, IT can do it a little bit better and I'll respond to the business. No, no, we're going to total restructure the company not we're a software company, we're a technology company and we're going to learn from you know, the, the, the Googles mm -hmm. uh, of the world and the like. And he said, we want to be considered there. Um, you know, it, it, God, what, what was his term there? It was like, you know, bank less, uh, live more, bank less. Right. I mean, what- and Joyful what, banking. What too, joyful that was banking. Yeah. Uh, you know, you <laughs> don't think of a financial institution as, you know, well, we want you to think less of the bank, but right, you know, that, that's just a powerful statement, you know, total reorganization, and as we mentioned, of course, OpenShift, one of those levers underneath, uh, helping them to do that. Yeah, and, I, and I, yeah, you mentioned um, uh, Dr. Ellen Grant, Boston Children's Hospital, I think about that, she's in fetal neuroimaging, um, and a professor of radiology at Harvard Medical School. The work they're doing in terms of diagnostics uh, through imaging is spectacular. Uh, I thought about Robin Goldstone at the Livermore yeah. uh, Laboratory and, and about our nuclear weapon monitoring and efficacy oh, uh, uh, monitoring. Livermore, so, so good. So it was, it was and, and John, great week. talk about the diversity of our guests. We had expats from four different countries, <laughs> right. phenomenal accents, uh, a, a wonderful slate of uh, brilliant women on the program from the customer side, uh, some of the award winners that you interviewed, yeah. uh, the executives yeah. on the program, you know, Stephanie Shearis, uh, always great, and Denise, who were up on the keynote stage. Uh, Denise with her 3D printed, sure. new Red Hat logo uh, earrings. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it was... Uh, um, it, and it, a couple it, of the old, yeah. old Yanks. 
<laughs> well, enjoyed it, Stu. Uh, as always, great working with you, and we thank you for being with us as well. Uh, for now, we're going to say so long. We're going to see you at the next Red Hat Summit, I'm sure, 2020 in San Francisco. Might be, a, I, I guess, a slightly different company, but it might be the same old Red Hat, too, but they're going to have $34 billion behind them at that point and probably riding pretty high. That will do it for our CUBE coverage here from Boston. Thanks so much for joining us. For Stu Miniman and our entire crew, have a good day.